Hey guys, Luke Warm Mining here. So a couple of you guys have reached out to me about how um, to reset these devices and gain access back into your Ice River Miner. Um, I've gotten a couple people and I've noticed a couple posts about it where people that you know didn't want to use like the PP Farmer firmware or something like that wanted something a little bit more like a canned um, overclock from T Swift. I um, went ahead and put one on that was too fast or too high of an overclock for the machine, and it basically locks the machine out and it's bricked. Um, because of the T-Swift firmware and like the stock Ice River firmware, if you try to reflash it, it does not work unless you put in that file. I know that's been changed now, but that was a problem before. Um, so what you would need to do normally is reach out to T-Swift and have them unlock the device and SSH into it. A lot of people don't um, feel comfortable with that, with having someone remote into their system, they wanna do it themselves. Um, so this is a way to do it yourself. You are gonna need this guy right here. This is a USB to UART, UART which is a serial um, standard um, obviously your K0 Ultra and then what I'm using on mine is these little um, breadboard uh, cables patching cables um, what you're gonna do is go in ahead and actually put it onto this um, UART header right here so this is standard on all the K0 um, Ultras and the KS5s there's a four pin version on the other Ice River devices I have not seen the AL0 um, and I have not seen the new RX-0 at this point. Uh, I know I'm a little behind on this, but RX-0 is out. It should have this UART port on there. So um, I'm gonna go over today how to put plug those pins in, how to actually log into this, because we will actually get a um, Linux terminal off of this, how to log into the root account using this thing, and then also changing the account name and password, or actually, sorry, generating an account name and password so that you can log into this anytime with SSH. So. Without further ado, let's go. Alrighty guys, so as you can see, I have the uh, little Xilink up here right now. Um, that is the actual SOC of the device. And then here is the port we're looking for. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and attach to the three pins um, that we need. So there's six here. Um, on this one, we only need three though. So this one right here is gonna be our ground. Our next one right here is going to be either our receiver transmit. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. We're going to rotate that guy a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and throw on our um, receiver tra uh, transmit. So as you can see, there is kind of a direction to this port. Um, we do have the clip in right here. So something from the factory, this would be something they already have manufactured that clips into this. There's actually some, um, you can buy um, the grid array that um, fits in this is 2 by 3 and I think it's 0.875 millimeter or something like that is the spacing for these ones. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, but honestly, just, like I said, taking these little uh, breadboard cables and plugging the female ends over the pins is more than enough to get it attached. Um, and then same thing on the UART side, what we're going to do is go ahead and look at our little UART here. And you can actually see we have VCC, ground, TXD, um, and then under there, it's a little bit glary, is RX, um, RXO. So what we're going to be connecting to is the ground, the TX, and the RX on this thing. Um, I'm going to use the cable that it comes with. But um, whatever you do, don't connect um, VCC. And then if you guys were curious how I figured out what these pins were, um, it's just taking a multimeter. So taking a multimeter and testing the top um, left pin against the um, barrel jack on the KSR Ultra, we'll scroll right over to it. That's going to be a ground on the outside. That's what these pads are for. It's the grounding pads. Go ahead and test it against all the pins. Um, and when I found one that beeped immediately, um, that was it. And then for testing the other pins, um, what you're going to do is get like a small power supply, not the one that comes from the factory. Like I have a little nine volt, a half amp power supply that has the same barrel connector as the KFC or Ultra, just something really low power. Um, plug it into there um, and then use the voltmeter to check all the pins. What you're looking for is um, the VCC pin. So that one, when the device is plugged in, you're gonna get a constant five volts out of it. There's gonna be no fluctuations. Then on your transmit lines, you're actually gonna see that up and down, the high and the low, um, which is that bit communication that's coming through it. Um, so yeah, but anyways, I've already done all that for you. Um, like I said, the top right right there is going to be your ground and then the other two your transmit and receive. Um, off the top of my head, I am blanking right now which one is which, but um, the nice part with those ones is you plug those into RxD and TxD, and if you don't get an output, <laughs> all you do is uh, swap the pins and you're good to go.
Um, so from here, what you're going to have to do is go ahead and plug in your power supply and then we'll jump over to PuTTY to actually connect to the device. Alrighty, so as you can see, I have the UART plugged in over here. I have it all hooked up to the miner. What I'm going to go ahead and do is take my little 9 volt power supply and plug it in right over here. So technically this board's good from 4.5 up to 24 volt. Obviously these things run at 19 volts originally. Um, and the most efficient power is actually at around 12 volt. So anyways, anything in between there should work fine. As you can see, 9 volt plugged in, boom, turns on and highlights. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is um, go ahead on PuTTY and access the device. Alrighty guys, so now we're back in the windows where we're in PuTTY. Um, honestly, you can use any kind of terminal that you can use to connect the serial, whether you're on Linux, uh, Mac, Windows, does not matter. So we're gonna go ahead and do is find the serial port that it's connected to on the UART device, which is COM3. You're gonna set the speed to 115200 or 115K. Um, and then just to uh, go over the pinout, um, the uh, top right one is gonna be our ground. The top center one is going to be our receive signal. And the bottom one is our transmit. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit open. And then now we're gonna plug in our minor to the power supply and as you can see boom boot it up so go ahead and press any key keep it from auto booting just to show you guys that we are in the terminal for this um go ahead and type help you can see all kinds of goodies in here so next step that we're going to do is go ahead and run a quick command to set the environment for boot which is going to be this right here i'll have it down below um this is going to give us um uh, root access and set up the boot options to make some adjustments to the user groups. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter and then from there we're just going to type boot. Alrighty, so now we are in. It took a little bit to boot up for some reason, but once we are in we are good to go. So now what we're going to end up doing is running all of these commands separately. So first you're going to run um, the top command right here, the echo command. Um, then we're going to Go ahead and um, set a new group, which is going to be called Ice River. Um, we're going to add um, the user to Ice River and give it pseudo access along with um, the password being set to Ice River. So it'll be Ice River, Ice River to get into it. Um, once you enter in all this information, it will actually go and add that onto there and you now have SSH access. So um, this has already been done. Um, if you run the PB Farmer firmware, I currently have that online, so it does work uh, normally. Um, you can just use Ice River, Ice River to get into it. Um, and I'll show how to log in right now. So now that we got that command ran on it, what we're going to go ahead and do is log into it with um, SSH into the SCP. Um, so you can use anything for the SCP connection or protocol, sorry. Um, I personally use WinSCP just because I'm on Windows. It's I, I like the interface a lot better and how it connects a lot better. Um, anything works, same thing with Linux. There's plenty of other ways to do it. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is grab the IP address of the miner. Um, this is different for mine now. Um, the port number is not 22 like it is typically for SSH connections. It's 54188 on these Ice River devices. And our password is also gonna be Ice River. So we're gonna go ahead and hit save. Hit go, hit login. And we should be, why is it defaulting to 13 again? Oops. We're gonna log in. Should be able to connect. Yep, it's gonna ask us to authenticate. We set the password to Ice River. And boom, there we are. We are currently inside of the um, miner as it is running and hashing. So um, we can see everything that's in here. There's our little Ice River folder. Um, here's the entire file system as it's running. So there's a couple files that you would normally need to bring over and insert into the user slash bin file on the miner. Um, if I do that, it will actually cause issues on mine because it's already um, got those files. So anyways, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm also going to be opening up a discord soon with PB Farmer where we'll have kind of a space for all of us to hang out. Um, maybe post some of your projects and I'll post some of my projects before I release anything about them. Um, I also have a ticket or form system for all your requests and questions and stuff relating to the firmware and anything else. Uh, just so if you know someone asks a question, um, you can go back and refer to it um, and look through it for yourself before asking a question uh, out of one of us. Anyways, 
Um, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Um, I'll see you later this week.